Uh, I'm sorry, I'm hard of hearing. Sorry. And I lost one of my hearing aids. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, so I, I was just bringing up, touching on the city of coalition building. Really. Um, for me, that the idea of I really is something I saw when I was at the I'm sorry, I can't yeah. really say the word. Um, Could you yeah. a white truck? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how well that would work. I mean, number of words, as I can say. But, um, so I was at the January 17th demonstration in D.C. Um, okay, that was just in January. Um, and about a good half of the people there were anarchists, black blocker, identified. And in my opinion, they totally screwed up what could have been a lot better of a demonstration. And they were they were beating the police. They uh, one of them had been on hunger strike and he had a seizure in the middle of something and they had to take him away. It totally and um, what I'm seeing having to occupy that really concerns me is this kind of devolving into a faction of anarchists and then people who are less radical, um, but kind of scared to, to voice these less radical opinions, because right now there's this kind of idea that if you don't want to overturn the system, you're not really with right. the occupied. You're not as radical as I am. Yeah. And so that's something and that's something we're struggling with here at Grinnell because it's a it's a core thing of like mm, seven to ten of us. And then we're perceived as radical and we've had a really hard time engaging right. the rest of, of this town. And I don't think that this would room. <laughs> what? This room. We're having trouble engaging the rest of this room. More more or less. <laughs> Um, I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean, and I don't, and I'm not, like, it's not something that personally offends me. It's just, um... I'm offended. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when these kids say, I know better than you, and I'm going to uh, fight cops and call them pigs, and because I have the right to do it, you can't oh, tell no, them no, totally I say to those kids, you're, <laughs> you're a cop. Oh, I find them totally offensive. I'm not talking about them. Oh. Um, and so I guess I'm just interested in how we can keep occupied from facing a lot of the of the resistance of the war resistance movements in the 60s. Uh, 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 keep them from doing what? From 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 going to the same fate that happened to. From making the same mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> you know, I, it looks to me like like Occupy will be making the same mistakes. And it already is. They already right? are. But. I think the existence of these stories, like mine, is sort of useful. You know, you can argue with people about it. Um, um, I, the other thing is that I, I'd like to see much more study of successful social movements of the 20th century. Um, like, for example, um, I've started my own personal I'm study. class next semester. Okay. <laughs> is that? I'm only joking. It's the class I'm teaching uh, in the fall social movements and we'll be studying all the revolutions. <laughs> what, what is your name? Keisha Scott. But let me just say, um, first of all, there are other people who are affiliated with SDS that are in this room. So just to honor them, I want to say please take a moment to talk to other people who were involved at various levels. Mm -hmm. That's one. That's good. Second of all, I love your story. And I also shared similarity being in the Black Panthers, that period of my life where I didn't talk about it. Right. By the way, I did, I'm almost 60, and I just put on my resume about two months ago that I was a member of the Black Panther Party. Right. 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 But that would not have gotten me a job. No way. It would not have gotten me shit, period. <laughs> okay, so that's two. Three. I also was involved in the Black Panther Party in SDS out of Ann Arbor. And that was my affiliation at Wayne State University. And I remember those debates and those discussions around the role of violence. Right. But as a result of being in the Black Panther Party, it was a moat issue because we were being attacked by the police. Yes. We didn't have white privilege. And, and in fact, any activity that we engaged in, we were put in a defensive strategy. So one of the things that I think your story is powerful about is because it tells a story of the way in which white young students use their privilege in multiple ways, right? And I think that that's a story that's not told in the history books and is a story that is very confusing then to students when they try to organize and choose multiple tactics. And with regard to that question of whether we use violence or not, let me just say this. The agenda 
to end the war and the agenda to push democracy to where it should be was one of the goals of SDS. It was saying that we have fucked up this country, clearly, which is why we wanted a different kind of democracy. And those young people were very brave to leave their campuses, to leave their schools and say, this is not the democracy I bought, right? And even though I understand clearly the faction he's talking about, because there were black activists who also did the same thing, Asada Shakur, who's in, in Cuba right now, mm -hmm. you know, can never come back to her own country, and others who are dead, yes. right? Yes. Okay? Too many. Plenty of them. My point is, is that they understood that they were fighting a system that had backfired in its promises. Yes. And I think that's what's powerful about Occupy, that it is holding the system to the promises of what the American ideal is. And in that respect, your story is fabulous. Because let me tell you, we may have to be violent again. Yes. I want to say that. This is not your professor, this is Keisha. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Professor Scott. Yeah, yeah, Keisha. Um, you made a number of points, and, and I'd like to make comments. Yes. Um, Absolutely. This story that I told about my faction of SDS yes. represents at most 500 people out of maybe 100,000 or more. Exactly. So that, that's one of the distortions that that movie, The White uh, yes. Water Underground, gets across. Yes. Is you do get a glimpse of the larger anti-war movement, but it makes it seem as if this small, tiny uh, group of people is worth more. Than exactly. Yes. So, if there's any, if there are any SDS uh, people here uh, who would like to talk about your experience in SDS, this would be a good thing. And I'll, uh, if you would, fine. But I'd like to get back to the other two points too. Sure. Okay. Did you want to? Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, Alan, my name. I was a student at Iowa State in the early '60s to '67, uh, and uh, contrary to your experience at Columbia. We had the gentleman who wrote this book uh, called Democracy from the Heart. Great Calvary. Great Calvary. Prairie, prairie power. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, the middle movement, one of the middle generation, there were three generations from 1962 to 1969. Three whole political generations in a seven year period. The middle generation was called Prairie Power, came out of Iowa. <laughs> Yeah, Greg uh, Calvert. I had Western Civ courses with uh, Greg Calvert. And he was very much into talking about uh, the war and imperialism in San Domingo and other places. There were lively issues back right then. And so it was, a, it was a really good introduction to uh, that kind of movement. He was later in the National Secretary of the SDS, I think just before you were. Uh, and maybe some of the conflict over violence versus non-violence was between you and, and his group. I'm not sure about that. Well, between between uh, our generation and the earlier generation. Okay, yes. yeah. But it, it, I, got, I was a member of the SDS there. There were 30 or so members. Uh, and we were educating ourselves and trying to talk about the issues with other people on campus. And it was in some ways kind of a lonely fight. It is a, it's a very big university, and 30 people don't have a lot of uh, influence in 22,000, you know? But uh, during that time, I don't know if anybody remembers uh, uh, any of this history. Uh, there was a, a young guy from Northwest Iowa, gone to California between his sophomore and junior year, came back, Brian Samuels, his hair was long, ran for governor of the student body president. Don Smith's his name. He's now, I think, maybe still a professor at the University of Iowa in anthropology. But he was elected. Strangely enough, he ran with a guy from the Bronx, a kid by the name of Gracidonio. They won, they served their half their term, more or less, uh, as officials, officers of the student body presidency and vice president. And uh, they kind of bombed out. I mean, they, they uh, and some of it had to do with expanding the organization. Some of it uh, simply uh, we didn't organize well enough to keep SDS going. 
Red Calvert left, uh, finished his decree, I think, and went on because he uh, saw other things he wanted to do. And, and he took some fire away from our organizing ambition. But it, it's really difficult to, to expand that sort of thing uh, beyond a, a solid base. And yet, uh, there has to be an agenda for organizing. In our case, it was almost entirely about any war. We, we talked about uh, and did pre-university courses about uh, imperialism, economic democracy, and uh, those sorts of topics. Uh, but most of the issue was uh, sending the war. Uh, and we simply didn't get uh, as many people turned around on that issue. I was gone by 68 when the Tet Offensive really did change people's minds around the country. Uh, I have left, I graduated and had gone to Brazil. In fact, it was a, a peace court. Right? That's a different issue. Um, the, the movement sort of ended, I believe, uh, in the 68, 69 era. And uh, the latter part of the war, you know, there was still protesting going up, but it wasn't SDS led so much. Oh no, SDS was gone by '69. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, who led the anti-war movement was returning vets, uh, the, the uh, Vietnam vets against the war, and now we have a group called Iraq vets against the war. Iraq and Afghanistan vets who are doing great organizing. Um, I, I'm sort of sorry that we're losing people, but um, did you want to say something? Yeah. Um, oh yeah, my thing is more. Research, I guess. But um, well, my question is more on a research basis, since I'm first generation American, and like my entire my, none of my family was actually involved in Vietnam, but they were actually involved in the Sandinista movement. Like, the Sandinista movement. Like, yes. Yeah. Uh, actually, my whole family was involved in that. But um, my question is, is that you know, because I want like my question is like about the end of World War II. Um, why it kind of felt time itself? Because I was wondering like what possibly go on farther, like, because I know about the collapse about the Symbanese, ex Symbanese Liberation Army around 75, 76 ish, and then the failed Symbanese movement, which followed the same kind of motions of it around 69, which kind of failed, and why didn't, like, people notice back then, like, this could end very bad? Yeah. Well, um, so you, your question specifically is about the end of SDS. Oh, no, uh, Weather Underground itself. Oh, the Weather Underground itself. Oh, OK. Incidentally, uh, 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 what's your name? Uh, Benji. Benjamin. 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 Yeah. Uh, um, mentioned the Nicaragua Revolution, the Sandinista Revolution. In the 80s, the United States fought another war against national liberation. This was in Central America. We didn't use American soldiers. We used surrogate troops. And so there was a war in Nicaragua, for example. Uh, there were revolutionaries, the Sandinistas, and there were uh, counter revolutionaries known as the Contra. This war has been completely and totally forgotten. Yeah. Hundreds of thousands of people died because of an American dis decision to pursue this war. When the president, whose name was Ronald Reagan, died, he was celebrated as a great humanitarian and a great leader and a great this. And all I could think of is he's a mass murderer. He killed hundreds of thousands of people. So, yes. anyway, I was involved in organizing uh, a, a construction brigade in Nicaragua, the north. 